Thrash City tries his best to cite his sources. All research done in preparation to this session is available in the reference link in the description. Dive deeper into the sources to view the information firsthand. America, land of the free, home of the brave. The only country in the world where you can get away with burying your newborn baby in the backyard. What events led up to this grade A justice system that we have? Well, we finna find out. What's happening? It's your history tutor, Thrash City. He teach y'all about American history. The story. The first settle is part three. We made it to the final Voyager of the first settler series. Now, as I said in the last session, the nationality of this Voyager may come as a surprise to y'all. But without further ado, let's, let's get straight into it. My boy is hailing from the far east, representing the flower of the center, and made it to America nearly a thousand years before Columbus did. Who I'm talking about? Oh, none other than Hoy Shin. I can't find no pictures of this mother. Can Google, Wikipedia? If Google ain't got, come on, Google got everything though. Didn't nobody make no pictures of this motherfucker? Draw him out or something? I gotta put something there. I can't have a faceless motherfucker there. Twelve seconds later. Oh, none other than Hoi Shin! So this is how the story goes down. Now before we get into this lesson, I'm gonna need y'all to hit that subscribe button. Yeah, I see you, the 51% of y'all who watch half of the video and then leave. Y'all, you think it's a game? Yeah, okay, thanks. Appreciate you. Fuck us. Anyways, prior to the 5th century, China, the flower of the center, was known to be mad introverted. You see, China has obtained a high level of civilization in which they smugly rejected the thought of mingling with any outside nation. They thought of the nations and the lands of the people outside were looked at as insignificant and unsophisticated swine. Barbaric vermin who had nothing of significance to contribute to society. Damn, China, that's how y'all felt? It's no wonder the Mongolians came to fuck y'all shit up. God damn it, how come every time us Chinese put up a wall, stupid Mongolians have to come and knock it down? Thankfully, that whole mindset changed. You see, the founders of the Celestial Empire stressed that they wanted to retain laws and customs according to the traditionary manner and to extend these laws and customs to other lands. Traveling has then become common practice for monks and missionaries to go out and spread Buddhism. So our Buddhist monk homie Hoi Shin thought that this was his time to go hard in the paint. He thought of all the other countries on the opposite side of the Pacific Ocean that didn't know nothing about Buddha, and he wanted to enlighten them, stating he wanted to extend the joyful mission of salvation to all the countries of the earth. There was legend of people who were far east of China, people who were so barbaric to the point where they painted their bodies. These savages were Hoi Shin's target. He sought out to find them and de-heathenize them. But how did Hoi Shin get there? Surely he didn't have no means of crossing the Pacific Ocean in the year 500, did he? Of course he did! The Chinese had these ships called junks. Junks were used back even before 210 BC. Specifically when a Chinese sorcerer named Zhu Shu sought off on his journey to find the elixir of immortality. Zhu Shu set sail more than 700 years before Hoi Shin. So they for sure had means of traveling those distances back then. So the story continues like this. Hoi Shin dipped out from China in the year 499 in search of the savage people. He arrived and named the land Fusong after the Fusong tree that grew in abundance. He met with the king of the land whose name was Ichi. There he had odd customs and traditions that they wrote in the glyph language and used paper from bark of the Fusong tree. They weren't confrontational, they didn't value gold or copper, and lastly, oddly enough, he was made aware that 40 years prior to him, five monks already came through and enlightened them about Buddha. No, God! Disappointed! No, God, please, no! Whoa, 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 wait, 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 hold up, time out. So there's a couple things we gotta tackle with this story. Question number one. 
Where did he land in America? Based off of the Boo Song Tree's description, it resembles the Mexican mega plant, which suggests that he landed somewhere around Mexico, where the Mayans are. Question number two! They had paper and wrote in the glyph language? I thought you said Native Americans didn't have no written language. See, that's a good ass question, and I welcome your skepticism. It shows you paying attention, right? So the Mayans had books. They were called codices. They were made from the bark of the mega tree, right? So I'm sure you may be thinking, oh, if they had books, well then surely there'll be some supported documentation about the Chinese and the Buddhists arriving, you know, on their land, spreading Buddhism, right? You're exactly right, except there aren't really any. You see, if we were able to fast forward 1,000 years to the year 1562 in July, we'd get your answer. You see, there was a Spanish bishop named Diego de Landa, who in the name of the Catholic Church burned 27 of their books, stating, We found a large number of books in these characters, and as they contain nothing in which were not to be seen as superstition and lies of the devil, we burned them all, which they, the Maya, regretted to an amazing degree, and which caused them much affliction. So in short, the bishop did to the Mayans what my mom did to my psychic Pokemon cards. Because of course those were of the devil too. Pokemon world is a world of the demonic, of the satanic. Your children knew, need to know there's a devil and he hates them and he wants to ruin their life. Question number three. So Hoishin went to Fusong to spread the good word of Buddhism, but you mean to tell me 40 years before that there were already monks who already introduced the Mayans to Buddhism? That's exactly right. You see, Hoi Shin wasn't the first monk to meet the Mayans. Back in the year 458, there were five Buddhist monks who made their way to Busan with the same purpose, to enlighten the Mayans about Buddhism. You see, the reason why Hoi Shin even found out that there were people who painted their skin was because of the voyage that happened four years prior to him. So if there are monks who made it to America before Hoi Shin did, then that calls into question. You see, maybe there were other people who made it to America that just didn't make the history books. Or if they did make the history books, they got burnt somehow. Or, you know what I'm saying, they just didn't stand the test of time. There are supported documentation of others who made it before Columbus. A lot of others. Like the Romans, Ari Marson, Thorblad Erickson, Thorfinn Carl Sethny, Fredis Eric's daughter, Bishop Eric Nupson, Prince Maddock of Wales, Paul Nutson, Prince Harry Sinclair and the brothers Zena, and Joa Vaz Cotterillo. Yo, that's a bunch of motherfuckers. Like, <laughs> I'm expecting there to just be like one or two more, but nah, there's a lot more than that. Is there anybody who you know that I missed? If so, leave me a comment down below of who it is. That's it for this session to learn with Thrash City. American history, the first settlers part three, the final part of the first settlers, bro. So next week, next Tuesday, join me. We're gonna actually dive into your boy. Everybody knows him, he's in the history books. Christopher Columbus. We are gonna finally get started on Christopher Columbus. I know it's been a long time coming, but it's happened. Until then, I'm proud of you. Stay up and keep crying. Stainless Steel Beats. Beats.